All right, hello. My name is Joanna and I'm a rising third year med student in New York City. Thank you for returning to my channel. So in this video, I'm actually gonna be talking about how I studied in M1. I talked about my reflection and how academically it was a bit hard for me in my last video. So today I'm gonna to talk about what I did and what I should have done. Um, but this is actually going to be in two videos and here is why because my program is a joint program or bsmd so we actually take some med school level courses in the undergraduate portion so in this first video i'm talking about everything i did before m1 so before m1 in the undergraduate portion we take biochemistry which is basically molecules to sell at our school but we take biochemistry we take genetics we take anatomy we take a course called um fundamentals to organ system and just so that you know what for fundamentals to organ systems is if you look at a first aid the beginning portion the beginning portion is things like biochemistry um so we, we, things like biochemistry pathology pharmacology all that stuff that's what we went through in fundamentals and in the back of your first aid where it has the organ systems like cardiovascular endocrine that's what we did in the actual m1 year so I'm going to talk about how I learned the first half of first aid. So let's just jump right into it because I don't want this video to take too long. So the first course that I will talk about is epidemiology. People normally take that during M1 or M2. I don't know when people take it, but we took it in our second year undergrad at my school. I don't remember how I passed. Um, if I remember what books I used, I will put pictures of them somewhere on the screen but I don't remember what books I use. I think what actually helped me is because before I took that course, I, that was when I actually failed. I'll talk about that in another video. Before I took epidemiology, I had failed and I was put on academic leave for a year. Essentially, what happened was uh, I took a year off before I got to epidemiology. During that year, I had a public policy minor because I want to do public health, but my my school doesn't really have that so i did public policy instead and focused on health policy um because that's what i wanted to do and during my public policy minor i had to take a statistics course and i think the statistics course is really what helped me with that portion of the epidemiology course and for everything else no idea but i will post whatever review book i remember using below so next course after that was biochemistry or my school molecules to sell we took that 2017 which is why my first aid my first first aid is 2017. so essentially for that class we had like professor written like in-house in-house that's what they call it we had in-house assessments for the course um we called it molecules to cells and i think the reason why they did that is because it was a fusion between biochem and cell bio all the cell bio stuff we had a textbook called the cell i'm not even going to put it up here because i hated it i'm a i like textbooks um when they are well written and i'm a big textbook critic i did not like the cell so i did not read the cell um so i did not do very well in the cell bio portions of the course but for the biochem portions, I did Lippincott's and BRS biochem, and I was fine. Did I do very well? No. That was mostly because I was commuting and still working at the time. That was my first, that was my second semester back from my academic leave during my, not my academic leave, but from my year away from the program. And during my year away from the program, I did a public policy minor and a theater minor. Two things are very different. Oh, like, yeah, very different from what we were doing in my program and two things that I absolutely adore. Um, so I think I was kind of struggling coming back to the program at the time. And so I think some of those feelings um, on top of just commuting again and um, relearning how to learn, and what hindered me from doing my best but if i can go back to biochemistry lippincott brs biochem first aid anything you learn you're going to annotate that section of first aid so annotate your first aid section i actually did that for biochemistry 
let me see if we even come up on camera but let me find a good page that makes me look like a good student but i would just read through and i don't yeah no it's not gonna work but i would read through and i would annotate my first aid so that's what i did and first aid didn't really help for the in-house assessments to be honest because it was a mix of cell bio and biochem and blah blah blah, blah, blah. But at the end of that course, we had a MBME biochemistry subject exam, the mini board, we call it. I think other schools call them mini boards, too. But for that exam, BRS, the biochem section of first aid, I did very well. Now, let me preface this. I took that exam the first time, the board failed, did really, really bad. And the reason why is because I didn't use my first aid. Um, because i think i was focusing a lot on what we were doing in class um and our class doesn't really prepare you for that board and they told us that they're like we know we don't prepare you for it but you know what but be confident because you know why not um so the second time around when i did it i was super calm that week i remember going to a spa with my sister before retaking it and the reason why is because i knew exactly what i had to do i was like this is an mbme style exam so you know what i'm gonna study like i'm studying for the mbme and so i read through brs biochem i read the chapters that i needed to from brs genetics i read um the first the biochem section of first aid per i did amazing i did so well my professor hugged me and i was like personal space but yeah i did really really well not to brag but just to say that ooh, sorry not to brag but just to say that i kind of know what i'm talking about when I'm, I'm recommending these resources other people recommend other things but this is what worked for me so the other course I took in undergrad was genetics. So for genetics, we had in-house assessments as well. So what I did for those assessments was I would take the slides, I would turn the slides into my own personal like outlines that I typed up and printed out. I would take those printouts to lecture, I would annotate them during lecture, and I would read them through over and over and over again. And I passed. For the final exam, I read through all of brs genetics the book did all the practice questions and i passed so basically brs genetics is everything you need to know about genetics um now so what have we talked about so far we talked about epidemiology we talked about biochemistry we talked about genetics so now after that my last semester undergrad we take the fundamentals of organ systems is where we learn everything else in the beginning of this book so everything else before the organ system section um, it's when we learn the histology, it's where we learn the physiology, it's where we learn the pharmacology, the pathology. So that's what we did in fundamentals. And then we also took clinical anatomy. How I studied for anatomy is that we were given a structure list of all the structures we were responsible for for each exam because we had practical exams and written exams. So for the practical exams, I would take my structure list, I would go into the lab, and I would, be, I would stay there until I was able to identify every single structure on the list on multiple different table um multiple different cadavers once i was able to do that i left that was that and i did pretty well i'm gonna say anatomy and fundamentals that semester was my best semester academically of undergrad so structure list in the lab identify on multiple tables and i was good well um i wasn't the best i had to go with a lot of friends who had to explain a lot of things with me but for anatomy in the lab learn in groups it will help you go there with a group of friends make sure you're all quizzing each other and make sure you're identifying um and you will do pretty well now for the written exams in our anatomy course we actually also learned embryology for embryology i used for embryology i tried so hard to read before we are born the textbook too long if I could go back, I would have read High Yield Embryology, and that would have given me all I need to know for that exam, but I didn't. But High Yield Embryology, I do suggest it. I did use it when I got to actual M1 as well. Actually, no, I used it when I got to M2, and I'll talk about that a little later, but High Yield Embryology would have helped me a lot, but I didn't do that. Um, we also did Osteology. Oh, so for the bones that we had to learn, our my school has this thing called net anatomy i don't know if other schools have it perfect i loved it i used it for osteology but i also used it for um 
to see the bodies more times in the lab i would go through on the anatomy and i identify it and i loved it because you could like cover structure names and fill them in but also they would give you like explanations and some clinical correlates so i'd be in the lab and i do not anatomy so not anatomy with the clinical correlates and the pictures help me study for both the written and the practical now what else worked for the written exams what i would do is i would read Grey's Anatomy for Students. Now, that book is insanely long. Our textbook for the course was actually um, Clinically Oriented Anatomy. Another great book, if you want to read that, I, I suggest it. I just didn't do it. I, I prefer Grey's Anatomy for Students. But in either book you're going to use, what I would suggest and what I did was I read the introduction for each chapter. I just read the intersection. Whether it was like, 10 15 20 pages read the intro section that'll kind of give me a overview of everything that was going on after i did that i hit it hard with questions the gold standard of questions is great nightmare review. yes gar some people call it gar isn't that so weird great nightmare review so i did gar questions i did pre-test anatomy questions i did lip and cots questions i did a lot of questions and i passed so we thank god for that um and the final course that i'm going to talk about in this video is fundamentals of organ systems so it's not even really like one course it's like <laughs> 12. histology Junqueras. Our professor would just copy and paste from Junqueras on her side, so I just read Junqueras. And Junqueras is an amazing textbook. If you are a textbook person, and I was, but I read kind of slow, so I had to adapt. But I read Junqueras. All of M1, I read Junqueras. I started Junqueras in Fundamentals, and all of M1, I read Junqueras. And even the start of M2, I read Junqueras. It is an amazing textbook. And then for questions, I did. I believe there is Lippincott's histology. So I did Lippincott's histology. Yes, those are the questions I did. For physio, I read the professor's slides because that professor was wonderful. It was like one of those people that were like born to, he loved teaching. So his slides were awesome. I read his slides. I did really, really well on physio, on just his slides and BRS physio, which is like the holy grail. Of all the BRS books, BRS Physio is the, the piece de resistance, is the top of the top. But BRS Physio is the best one. So I read his slides, I did BRS Physio, passed, done. So we got the two, first two out the way. Pharmacology. His slides were also amazing. He did a really good job at the like pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, clearance, all that stuff. So that's what I did for that portion of pharmacology. If I could go back, I would have read his slides as well as read the first few pages of the farm section in here where it talks about those things because that would make sense and I just don't make sense as a human being but that's the point. Then the second portion of pharmacology was when we actually did like the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, sympathomimetics, all that stuff. I bombed. Here is why. I didn't. I tried to use those professor's slides, were not the best. And then we also had the exam when anatomy had picked up because we took those two courses in the same semester. And it was right after spring break. I didn't study during spring break. But yeah, I didn't pass. But here's how I could have passed if I read the rest of the pages of the um, farm section in front of this book because it perfectly explains those systems this, the nervous systems the different drugs the endings all that stuff but also sketchy farm those videos would have saved my life i also use usmle farm recall um i also did brs farm i personally don't really like brs farm it's okay it's useful but I just, I don't know, the way it was written, it was too bare for me, in my opinion. I think that was the issue. But I did use it for questions, so it really helped. Um, and that's farm. 
pathology because pathology was sprinkled over everything and not its own um block i never studied pathology which bit me in the butt when i got to m1 because i didn't know basic pathology but if i can go back and tell 20 year old joanna hey study pathology here's what she would have done pathoma the first the first like chapters or units of pathoma perfectly go over basic pathology so watch pathoma and then read and annotate the pathology section in the beginning of this book and you're golden that's pathology now micro for micro the the basics where you do like conjugation and all that stuff i attempted to use slides no don't do that what you want to do is read the first few i'm always going to lift up this book because this book once you find out that you got into a medical school the first thing you do is buy this book you tell your loved ones to buy this book a wish list for somewhere where you are going to say i want this i need this i need this book and you get it so micro read the first few pages of this and you go through all like the bacterial like stains and conjugation and all that stuff here um and micro made ridiculously simple was another thing that i read now for the actual bugs sketchy micro as i mentioned in this video the last few topics i've been talking more about what i should have done and not what i did see there for farm i talked about what i should have done for path i talked about what i should have done so you can tell i wasn't doing so well in those topics so when it came time for the micro block i was trying to salvage my grade so i didn't have to remediate the course sketchy micro sketchy micro taught me everything i needed to know i completely obliterated that exam saved my grade finished with a pretty good grade and fundamentals because of sketchy micro so get you sketchy micro it's amazing i will also talk to a friend there was a game she used to play that really helped her with the um microbiology so if i get to name that game it will be somewhere here um but sketchy micro is all you need i'm sorry there's no other i can't stress that enough sketchy micro read through the micro section in here to refresh it and drill it and review it and you've passed microbiology and there my friends is the ending of my med school adventures as an undergraduate so with that this is a very long video i apologize but i hope i gave you a lot of resources and a lot of useful information that you can use no matter what school you go to if you're preparing for school you can just get a, a kind of idea of what type of resources you'll be using and kind of check them out yourself and see which ones you prefer um don't overwhelm yourself with resources but yes i hope that this video was useful and in the next video i'm going to talk about how i studied in the actual m portion what i did and what i should have done so thank you so much if you tuned in today i hope you find any of this information useful please comment down below if there's anything else you want to see from me and um that's about it bye guys <laughs>